Hi there, folks. In this lesson, we're going to look at another way to implement concurrency, or rather, the updating of values in a safe way without using locks. In fact, the problem that we've been solving so far is a little bit overcomplicated when we think about updating some shared value. In fact, if we by default only want one value to be updated or incremented, there is actually a better solution to do this. So let's go ahead and look and see what C++ has to offer. So if we go ahead and look at the CPP reference guide on the right, you'll see that we have these atomic operations. I'm going to go ahead and click on atomic here and bring up the page here. So atomic, remember, you can think of like atom or something that's indivisible. So that means some operation where you wouldn't want an interleaving of reads and writes to cause a data race. So we can actually use this data type to simplify our code here on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and do so now. So let's go ahead and see an example here. So I need to include atomic here. And let me just go ahead and do that. And now I can actually get rid of my lock here. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my lock here. And I'm going to go ahead and instead of creating a regular integer, I'm going to create a standard atomic here. In. So this is the data type here. It's uh, an integer. And this is the templated uh, class here. So atomic is the a class in the data type uh, integer here that's going to be protected. Then I'm going to update my code here just for a moment to do shared value plus plus. That's the atomic operation that I want a thousand threads to do to increment this value here. So let me go ahead and compile this. You'll see that I'm using 20. I could use um, 17 or 11. This is an older feature. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then I'll run my program. And you'll see that the shared value is Again, always 1,000, no matter how many times I run this. Now, I want to look a little bit carefully at Atomic here, just so you can see the different operations that take place here. You'll notice that any of the primitive data types, bools, ints, chars, etc., were able to do this. And if I go ahead and down and look at the member functions available to us and some of the overloads, you'll see operator plus plus is indeed overloaded, so we can just do shared value plus plus. Now, I do want to be a little bit careful here, because if I do shared value plus one, and then I write here and recompile, you'll notice that we have our old problem, where we essentially have a data race, because this is an interleaved operation. So we have to be a little bit careful when using atomics and just use plus plus for uh, a post increment, because that's what is supported. here. Now, what if I did uh, plus equal one here? Well, let's try to recompile, rerun, and again, we see that this is part of the overloads here. Because again, by default, we're not doing a read and write. But how this is implemented is usually with some sort of hardware mechanism, some sort of compared exchange or a test and swap. So you can look into Atomics uh, if you want to see how this class is actually built. And Atomics, while well, they work with all the primitive types here, which I'm going to scroll through and just highlight some of these, um, different types here. They can also work with your own data types as well if you would like to uh, build some. The idea though is that your type has to essentially be just a collection of bits that you're operating on. Because again, the hardware primitives that support this operation to see if something has changed or in the hardware, if you want to think about it, locking the data and preventing a thread from updating it, it has to be simple. It has to be a quick test that can be done with some bits. And if that's a little bit too deep in the weeds for you, don't worry. Just know that you can use atomic and that you've got operators like plus plus, minus minus, minus equal, plus equals, etc., where you can get away without using locks. If you'd like to look a little bit more at this, I recommend reading through the guide here. And you can even see that there's something denoting if locks are even used at all behind the scenes on your particular implementation of atomic. So I'll leave you with that there. And I think this is a better way to solve our problem in the sense that now we can never really get it wrong, meaning that we'll forget a lock or perhaps use too many primitives and over-synchronize, meaning we don't need a lock guard and a mutex and perhaps multiple locks here. We can just get away with one atomic variable. So hope you enjoyed that lesson. and We'll see you in the next one.